Hey guys, Luke from Trucat here. We're out at Green Height again. It's four degrees on a nice winter morning. See, it's very foggy. Um, but today we've got the team out, me, Rod, Levi, and Tom, and we're gonna be taking out two of the discos. So we've got the Discovery 330 on my left here and the Discovery 4 meter. And the aim of today is we're gonna try, answer a lot of frequently asked questions. Um, you know, how the boats perform under different loads, different engines, and just some tips and tricks all around that. So some key topics we're gonna to be talking about today are engines, props and permatrims, transoms, and then also weight distribution, just so you can get your best performance out of the true kit. Now let's talk about outboards. There's a vast array of outboards and there's something for everyone. Everyone's got a different use case and some people like smaller, lighter outboards. Some people need bigger, heavier, more powerful outboards. Um, our boats basically suit everything from two horsepower to 20, possibly even 30 horsepower in the future. So generally smaller horsepower, lighter, bigger horsepower, heavier, two strokes are lighter, four strokes are heavier. You've really got to figure out what's most important to you. Is it weight? Is it power? Is it um, thrust getting out of, you know, getting onto the plane? Is it fuel economy? Obviously fuel economy, four, four strokes is going to be better than two strokes. Um, and also in a lot of countries you just can't buy two stroke engines anymore. It's all about four strokes which are obviously cleaner and better for the environment. And just touching on electric outboards, we don't have one down here today. But you know, you've got the torpedoes, you've got the e-propulsions, Mercury are doing a good electric outboard. Um, these are becoming more popular and uh, are very often used with true kits. They're generally lightweight, except for the battery. The batteries are heavy, but the units are very lightweight. Uh, they're rechargeable, they're great for the environment. Uh, they're very quiet and they're pleasant to use. And um, Certainly for carrying, you're not carrying tanks of fuel around and that sort of thing. So becoming more and more popular with our, with our type of boats. All our true kit boats are designed for short shaft engines. Um, that's how you're going to get your best performance. Now you can use a long shaft, but the, the whole leg of the engine is going to sit deeper in the water and cause a bit more drag. So that's why we recommend short shaft engines. Okay, one of the first things we want to talk about is propellers. Obviously every outboard has a propeller and there's a few things you need to know about a propeller is um, they're measured in different ways. First you've got the diameter of the propeller which is the overall point to point diameter. Then you've got the pitch, uh, cupping. Cupping is how much it's rolled around the edge here which is basically helps the, it grip the water. Then you've got the rake of the propeller blades which is how much they're either raked aft or raked forward. And you've got um, blade area. So some propellers have particularly small blades and some have larger blades. Generally with our, our sort of boats, larger blade area is a, is a big benefit. And then you've got the material that the propeller blades are made out of. Um, these ones here are aluminium, but aftermarket you can often get stainless steel propellers also. And why would stainless steel propellers, do they have an advantage? Um, one of the advantages of a stainless propeller is they are stiffer and thinner. So generally with a stainless propeller it's a higher performance prop than it is with an aluminium one. Another thing we want to talk about is engine trim. Now most engines will have a pin, like this one here. I'm just going to take this pin out. Now this pin controls how far the engine will go down. So the more the engine's tucked in under the boat, the lower the bow will be. And as you bring the pin back, the engine sits higher and then the bow comes up. And you can adjust this. You can see there's several holes here for the engine trim. I'm going to put this in the lowest hole, which is normally the hole that we like. Is There's the lowest hole, which means the outboard is tucked as hard and under the transom as possible. But depending on your weight distribution, there are other hole options which may suit your use case better. So another thing we want to talk about is hydrofoils. In this case we've got a permatrim fitted to this outboard here. Now permatrims are our preferred hydrofoil. Uh, we think they're the best performance and they're the ones that we recommend. But there's several different other brands also that you can get out there depending on 
what's available to you at your local marine store or online. Um, now what does a hydrofoil do? One, it helps stop air being drawn in from the water surface down to the prop, which can cause ventilation. So by having this big flat plate, which increases the surface of your cavitation plate, it stops the air coming down into it. It also increases the water pressure around the propeller. It really forces the water around the prop, which helps um, give the prop better grip. And the other thing it does, because, because it puts a lid on the thrust of the, pro of the uh, prop, all the thrust comes out horizontally instead of some of the component going vertically. Now what that does is it keeps the bow down, especially when you're taking off. Now keeping the bow down on takeoff is a big gain on getting the boat onto the plane. Now best performance on takeoff is gained by smooth application of the throttle. Just slowly applying it as the well the propeller retains grip with the water. If you just go from 0 to 100 and go full throttle, you'll find that the prop can slip more and you'll get less performance, less acceleration than smooth application. A good analogy is you're stopped at the headlights. <laughs> a good analogy is you're stopped at the traffic lights in your car on a wet road. You don't want to go full uh, accelerator because your tires will slip. You just want to apply that accelerator smoothly. It's the same here when you're taken off in uh, water with, a, with an outboard. We just want to touch on transoms here. Now transoms are your transfer between your outboard and your boat. So it's very important that your transom is very stiff to maximise whatever horsepower you've got into forward thrust. You can see our transoms now are aluminium, they're very lightweight but they're very very stiff and they provide a good power transfer. Um, we tailor the height of the transom to each individual model. Uh, the bigger boats that can carry the very heavy outboards have a slightly higher transom with a riser and that allows you to carry a, a 15 or a 20 horsepower four stroke on say the Discovery 4 meter. And then the smaller boats like the Navigator 250 and 3 meter have a slightly lower transom because they're carrying less weight and uh, smaller outboards and everything sits a little bit higher in the water anyway. Now we just want to talk about weight distribution and the importance of keeping the boat level. We always like to say a level boat is a fast boat and having the weight distribution right depending on whether you've got one person, two people, three people, four people or even more is really important. Um, firstly, I'm gonna show you how you should put your weight if you've got one person. So if you're one person in the boat, always try and get your body weight as far forward as possible. And really, you should have the fuel tank tied into the bow of the boat, like we have on the uh, the Discovery there. Um, getting that weight forward will promote planing and keep the boat level with the water. Another thing you can do if you're only one person in the boat to get your weight forward is to use a tiller extension. So we're going to attach this tiller extension now and show you how that's used. I find this is a really comfortable way of um, steering the Discovery with one person. You have to make yourself a nice handle tiller extension, weight in the middle of the boat, really balanced, it's very comfortable, the boat's super stable so it's really easy just to stand up, you can just do low speed, you get really good visibility and um, you can even pop it onto the plane if you want to. Now talking about weight distribution, the heaviest thing in the boat generally are the people in the boat. So if I'm one person in the boat, I actually like to use the seat because the seat allows you to get your body weight right in the middle and holding the, the tiller, body weight in the middle and as far forward as possible. When we're two people in the boat, 
obviously the person steering the boat has to be back here on the helm and then we get the second person on the opposite side and forward. Now that gets the weight forward and it balances out the side to side weight. When we're three people in the boat, uh, we like to have the person on the, who's helming the boat on the seat in the middle and then the other two people forward up near the front seat, split side to side so that the weight distribution is nice and even fore and aft and side to side so the boat sits level. And then when we're four people in the boat, obviously we go, it's actually quite nice to spread out to the tubes and one person either side at the back of the boat on the tubes and then two people at the front on the tubes. So we're nice and even side to side, fore and aft. So we're just gonna show um, planing capabilities. We've got the Discovery four meter here, the 15 horsepower, uh, two, two guys in the boat and I've got a speed app running, so I'll show you the, the speed that we're doing. adults in the boat we're going to do the same thing 15 horsepower and we're just going to show the planing capabilities of the true kit discovery here just coming up to speed here right around 30 kilometers an hour easy planing with um, three adults in the boat Okay, so now we've got all four of us on the boat. It's probably, uh, I'm not sure what the weight is. We'll let you know in the comments, but um, it's four of us on board. Discovery four meter, 15 horsepower. Yeah, we'll just let you know how it goes. I've got the speed app running, so we'll show you. to abandon the Discovery 330 to get all four of us in the boat. Luckily no one claimed the abandoned ship. Let's just talk about um, cavitation and ventilation. Cavitation is caused when um, steam is formed on the low pressure side of the prop, often caused by either prop damage or the incorrect prop. This and noticeable by um, a lot of vibrations through the boat. Now this isn't very common on these small engines and small boats like this. Ventilation on the other hand can be common and ventilation is caused by when you get too much air around the prop and is noticeable by the revs going high and then the performance of the boat dropping. Now things that really make a big difference to ventilation are a cupped prop that's adding a little bit of extra curve, a little bit of extra curl to the trailing edge of the of the propeller blade, big blade areas, permatrim, and getting the boat level, which means that you get clean, undisturbed water flowing over the prop. If you're all your weight's at the back of the boat, you'll find you're getting disturbed water to the prop and your performance can go, can go down. So high performance is gained by a nice engine, suitable prop, permatrim, and a nice level boat. Okay, we've lifted the boat up here. The, guy, the guys are um, using their muscles today. 
um, just to show the underneath of the boat and how the water flows along the bottom. Now, and we just want to talk about weight distribution and the importance of keeping a level boat. As you can see, these catamarans, like a true kit, um, have the pontoons at the side and have a flat bottom. Now, when the water's flat, the water flows along and it hits the propeller nicely. If all the weight's at the back of the boat and the transom's down and the bow's in the air, the water flows along and then you end up, it comes up here and then you end up with turbulent flow right around with the prop and that's what you don't want because it can cause ventilation. Now, there's a lot of reasons we like catamarans and are big believers in the concept. Stability, lightweight, carrying capacity, but one of the things is um, performance with a small outboard. For instance, Luke just jumped in this little Discovery 3.3 with an eight horsepower, and he was zipping along at 27 kilometers an hour with an eight horsepower, which is pretty good performance. All right, we're in the Discovery 330 now with a eight horsepower two stroke. So we're gonna demonstrate the planing with two people, me and Tom on board. So it was a very successful morning out here on the water. Um, we showed you great ways to optimize your performance on true kits, and it can be applicable for other boats as well. Um, we had a very flat, nice morning, four degrees, but in different conditions, the results may be slightly different. Um, but yeah, we just showed you the best ways to optimize your true kit for different setups and how the overall performance works with different, different weights, where to put the weight, and um, yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed and feel free to reach out if you have any more questions. Cheers.